In this video, I want to show you how you can integrate Lovable with your existing website. So if you already have a website in WordPress, Webflow, Squarespace, Web Studio, whatever it is, you can build components in Lovable and natively integrate them into your existing website. It's pretty cool. Let me show you how. We're going to use a web concept called web components. Um, and what they allow you to do is you can actually build components that are attaching with a shadow root to other pages. So you can build a component that loads remotely, but then this component itself can attach itself to a website and then let natively live inside of there without the limitations of an iframe. That's how intercom works. That's how, um, you know, all those live chat widgets work that you can add on your websites. So let me show you how you can set this up. I already have an example page here, and I'm just going to show you how this will work then on any builder out there. So inside of here, let's say, Build a nice floating floating widget. Build a nice floating widget that is a button that is a button with a chat icon. And if I if I click on it, it opens a live chat widget with an AI assistant with an AI assistant that uses JavaScript to get the content of the current page it's on and use that to answer answer questions and i'm just going to say use lovable cloud to proxy the ai api ai api calls so it's secure there you go and now there are more that we need to do for security but you know uh, I'm just going to make it quick here. And then let's say I need this component to be a custom web component following the web platforms, web component framework. And then I'm just going to add this web component documentation from the official developer documentations for the browser inside of here. So I want the component to load as a, as a custom HTML element with the tag lovable chat component and it adds a SRC attribute to load the component remotely so I can embed I can embed it on all other websites. Please set this up as mentioned. Okay, and now I'm going to send this to Lovable and this will be very interesting because now we're not going to use Lovable to build an entire application, but we're going to use Lovable to build a component for an existing website to take something that we've already built somewhere else and extend its functionality. So that's a cool way to do this. It will take a couple of minutes for it to set it up. So let's take a look at this. I'll build a beautiful embeddable AI chat widget as a web component. This will be a floating button that opens a chat interface, extracts page content and uses AI to answer questions. Uh, design inspiration, modern chat widget like intercom with a sleek professional look. 
there you go. It's now using Lovable Cloud for the AI processing and all that kind of stuff. And now it creates the widget pages. It builds the web component. We should be able to load it remotely. And, you know, you can use this to build your own intercom kind of SaaS and then, you know, charge people for adding those widgets on their websites. There's so much how you can monetize this idea. I think it's pretty cool. And we'll just wait till Lovable is done and then I'll show you this in action. So now Lovable finished the widget. So let's take a look at this. Um, let's publish this. And I think there is some manual stuff that we need to do with it. So let's make sure it's published. I want to copy this URL here and just quickly give this to Lovable. And let's tell Lovable, this is my, ooh, let's close this. Uh, let's tell it, this is, this is my Lovable URL. Let's put this in here because I want it to actually give me the um, correct one. It even created like a whole documentation page. And as you can see, this is the widget. Now, is it fully responsive? Not yet, but it's still cool and we're going to fine tune it. Um, and you can just embed those widgets on any website. So, um, and then the nice thing is they work remotely. So when you change something in Lovable, it changes it on your website. So you don't have to go back and repaste and copy code over and back and all that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, it's just now going to make the website updates to load it from the correct source. This can take a little bit. In the meantime, I can already assume how it will work because I know a little bit about web components. Um, I'm a fan of them. So let's zoom in here and let's just go to my favorite website, HTML online viewer when you do this kind of stuff. So let's just paste our website URL inside of here. And now it gives me this embed code for the web component. So I can just paste this inside of here. Now, obviously, it's not going to work because it loads it from your domain. So we're just going to swipe out the domain here. Right? And we're going to paste that here. And let's see if it does load. Let's see. Add the component anywhere lovable component. Let's format this. Okay. We have a script. It loads the script. We can delete this now and let's see if this works here. Okay, let's format that. Let's preview this. It doesn't seem to load the component. So we'll see if this JavaScript file actually is loading the widget code. So let's open this one here. And as you can see, this goes to a 404 page. So we need to adjust the web component a little bit. Um, and as you can see, widget loader JS, um, let's say, I think we have a React router issue intercepting with the code that we're actually delivering. If, uh, let's say, if I go to, and then, you know, your domain slash widget loader dot JS, I get a 404 page. I think the React router is not considering, considering that this page should deliver a JS file. There you go. And now I'm just telling it because this link here that we're opening, this widget loader JS that it created for the um, you know web component, uh, it should actually serve a JavaScript file. And I think the React router is trying to catch it instead of delivering a JavaScript file. And that's where the problem occurs. You're absolutely right. React router is catching that route. Let me fix this by creating a widget loader as a true, true static file in the public folder. So now it creates it as a static file. And then we'll be able to then surf this and then have this widget work on any site that we embed this little code. And you can build a business around it. You can add an HTML attribute to the widget with the user ID and charge them for, you know, sessions in the AI mo module, in the AI widget, and all that kind of stuff. So it's actually quite genius, and you can make sure it's responsive. But this is how you can actually, you know, get Lovable working in your other websites that are built outside of Lovable and sprinkle in some native functionalities and they will have access to everything on the page because it doesn't have the limitations of an iframe which can't go outside of its container but web components can go outside of their containers so they can get access to everything that's on the page very useful for this example here um, and yeah we'll, we'll see it'll take a little bit till it's done and then we'll check this out actually it's done already so 
Let's try opening this page. This should open a static JavaScript file after we have this update. And then let's finger crossed that this will work. Let's cross our fingers here and let's see. It'll take a little bit. There you go. And now let's try opening the page. And this is now loading the widget, which is good. So now we can close this. And if I'm previewing this page, as you can see, now this page includes our AI assistant. So this widget now is our AI assistant. So I can copy this script here and people can just add this on their website. So, you know, like, as you can see, Lovable gave us this embed code. I can add this embed code anywhere and it will load the widget. So I can go to my, you know, third party website tool and this could be your user or your client. They can add a custom HTML block inside of here. And there are ways how you can monetize this. Let's just run script inside of Canvas. They're going to paste this embed code. And as you can see now, our lovable widget appears on our third party website. Let's say, what is this site about? Oh. Uh, do. What? Oh, I can't do A because uh, cause it interferes with our shortcuts. So let's publish this page for now. <laughs> and, and then we should be able to have this lovable widget actually working on any third party page, which is quite cool. Web components are so underestimated. They are very powerful and you don't have to use any tool besides lovable to create them. You can now create them with the power of AI directly inside of lovable. It seems like it takes a little bit for it to publish here in Web Studio, but this is, you see like the whole idea, this works. Let's just, uh, you know, say hi. And I won't send, I think there's a minimum limit. We'll see, maybe we need to improve the functionalities of how this will actually work. Oh my God, it's still publishing. Unbelievable, takes forever. It's still publishing. This takes forever. Okay. So in the meantime, we'll just run this in HTML online viewer and I can ask it, you know, hello, how are you? And now it won't let me send the message to the AI. So now we can just edit this and let's say, perfect, but I cannot submit my question question to the AI chatbot. There you go. Let's send this. So now we can go back and forth. We just update it and the widget will automatically update. So this is pretty cool. You can build those widgets for your clients, for yourself, for your websites, and then they all just update without you having to go into 20 projects to all update them. Web components are quite cool when it comes to that, especially when, you know, it's just a client side application. And you can then kind of like have one project managing some of the components that will be used by other projects because they can also emit custom events, call functions on your page, interact with the entire page contacts. They're not limited to, you know, like basic post messages such iframes would do. So it's quite neat actually what you can do with them. Um, and you can now have this embedded on any page. And it's still building. Oh my God. <laughs> this takes a little bit, but... Uh, okay, I think this was successful now on Web Studio. So you can see now I have my page on Web Studio. Now we just need to do an update so we can actually ask it some stuff. Um, and we can, you know, submit the message because it blocks that. And then we'll see if it has the context on the entire page, which it should have because that's how web components work. So let's see what I fixed. Okay, let's publish this. Now the nice thing is I don't have to now add this code again, change this code. I Updated in Lovable, and because it's a web component, it loads the code, the source dynamically. Next time I load the page, the component will be fixed. So I can now reload this page. As you can see. And now I can say, hello. I mean, isn't like, look at this. Let's say, what is this page about? Um, this page explains what a content block component is and how to use it. It describes how to edit, add, and predefine instances with a content block in both the content block component 
is exactly what the page is about. And this is how you build web components inside of Lovable and you can make lots of money with that. There's a thing called Typeform and they're making millions by just doing this. There's a thing called Intercom, they're making millions by doing this. There are lots of major B2B SaaS that just ship you a little code component as a, you know, as an embed. You can embed stuff into a Shopify store. You can build Shopify apps with this that just embed web components in people's sites to have a sales counter and all that kind of stuff. And now you can do it in Lovable with this hack that I showed you using the new web components. And they're not new, they're pretty old, but the web component standard, which is supported in Lovable.